Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Catholic Truth Podcast. Today, we have a huge, incredibly important video. And I mean, ever since COVID, I have been super incredibly concerned about the state of many Catholics, the state of many non-Catholics, just people in our culture who are struggling with mental health issues. There's so much anger. There's so much depression. There's so much anxiety. There's so much struggle. Even in the spiritual life, people are struggling to know who God is. They're struggling to know his love. They're struggling to uh, accept his forgiveness. And there's a lot of scrupulosity. And there's a lot of people just, before COVID, there were some struggles. But after COVID, I have seen it go a lot worse. And there's a lot of people, even in the church, even high up in the church, people who are working for the church, who are incredibly uh, struggling. And this might be embarrassing. This might be something that you don't want to admit to yourself. But there's a lot of people around you who are getting hurt because uh, people choose not to deal with their mental health issues. And I've struggled with them. And my guest today, Colin Nikaza, has also struggled with them. And he has an incredible story of coming through them to the other side, where now not only did he get through them, but he helps other people to get through them. And if you don't know Colin, he's a wonderful guy. I actually know him personally, does a lot of great work. He was actually a seminarian for seven years. He's a Catholic speaker. He's the former director of Young Adult Outreach for the Archdiocese of New York. And he's the current director of evangelization at St. Patrick's Cathedral in New York. Wonderful man full of wisdom, has great messages on divine mercy and mental health. And he's going to share his uh, story today of how what he struggled with, just so you can realize that, you know what, people, you're not on your own. Lots of people struggle with this. Lots of good people, lots of popular and important people, even celebrities struggle with these things, but not everybody deals with them. And I just want to say you don't have to stay, you know, in that. You know, and Colin's going to share how he got through it and how you can too. So, Colin, welcome to the show. I'm really glad that you've joined us today. Hey, Brian, thanks for having me on. As you said, it's such an important topic. So, I'm excited and happy to share with you. Yeah, Colin, I mean, you've changed <laughs> thousands of people's lives. You've worked at, you know, you speak around the country, you know, people know you. You're, you know, the, a go to guy on divine mercy topics. And, um, I'll link all your information below in the description section. But, you know, you struggled with mental health issues. You know, what specifically did you struggle with? And how did you come to know that you even had problems with it in the first place? So it was right around COVID. I basically it was kind of revealed to me and discovered that I struggled with OCD. And the, when I was really looking at it and really coming to realization of this, I recognized that I've had it my entire life. I was basically born with it. So I, you know, it wasn't just like, I knew, like it was something I struggled with, but didn't really know what it was exactly I was struggling with. Um, so, you know, OCDs is very misunderstood out there. I mean, it's, it's obsessive cons- compulsive disorder. They, a lot of people just think it could be as simple as, I mean, there's parts of this that are true, but people, when they think of somebody with OCD, they think that everything just needs to be clean or they got to keep checking if the burner's off or whatever <laughs> it is. And that could be like, that's, those are symptoms and that definitely people struggle with that, but it actually is a lot more intense depending on the situation you have. So one way I like to explain it is and the particular one that I struggle with is that we don't realize this, but the human mind has many thoughts a day as the human heart has beats. Our mind is constantly moving. This is why we dream at night. And in, you know, throughout the day, you, you, I, all of us have hundreds and hundreds of thoughts that we probably don't even realize that we're thinking. We're almost not even aware of that we're thinking of it. So, but for people without my condition, it's not a big deal. It's, it's like those thoughts, if you will, kind of just go like clouds across the sky, like no big deal, you know? Uh, but with some of my condition, what could happen is that one of those, those thoughts, no matter what it is, it could be irrational, it could be based off nothing, no matter what, like all of a sudden what could happen is that that one thought can get latched into your thought process and you can't let go of the thought. And so that's where the obsessiveness comes in. Like the thought just gets round in mind and you can't get rid of it no matter what you try to do. Depending on how bad your situation is, that one thought then can get start getting buried down deep into your emotional state. And so whatever that thought is can cause tremendous fear, tremendous anxiety, and tremendous depression. And so I noticed throughout my life, there were different times where like, all of a sudden I'm fine, 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 paralyzed with fear, fine, 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 paralyzed with like deep depression for weeks on end, fine, fine, paralyzed with this 
uncontrollable, awful anxiety. And I had no clue what was going on. And it was during COVID that I discovered that, oh, this is not normal. Like I just always just was like, well, I'm just going through a cycle of whatever. And, and, but then it was like, once I really did a look into, started to look into it, getting the help I needed, I discovered that that's what this was. It was a classic case of OCD. Yeah. And what are, what are some <clears throat> things that people might get anxious over or obsess over that, you know, kind of might lead to these in just general, general, some things that people struggle with? Yeah. So, I mean, it, it's different for everybody and it kind of depends on where, like your state in life, your vocation in life, uh, you know, as a Catholic, um, especially as a seminarian, where I could see it really played out in many different ways is lots of irrational, irrational fears against God the Father. Deep, deep scrupulosity, always thinking that I was sinning or I was in the state of sin, even when I wasn't, just because I was basing it off how I felt about things. Because what happens with OCD and other mental illnesses is that you think what you're going through is real. Like you think it's really, really real when it's not. So it's almost like this false reality that you're caught and convinced that it's real. And because you think it's real, it becomes very scary. Um, so and so there was very moments of like heavy scrupulosity, thinking I was const constantly going confession, thinking I was in state of sin. Um, and then also like big fears about vocation. Uh, so one thing that I experienced, uh, this is like an extreme, um, but, you know, you know, again, not knowing that I had this condition, when I first started the journey, I was in seminary and I was also discerning the religious life. And so I was in Rome for, you know, for almost a month and a half, basically discerning this religious order. And long story short, I'm, I'm flying to Rome, I'm preparing myself to possibly go to Rome, like leave my family, leave my friends, leave America, leave everything that I know and join this order because I was at the time convinced that God was calling me to, to this vocation in Rome. And so yeah, I'm on the plane. I get all, all of a sudden I get off the plane and I like all of a sudden like reality just hit into me. I was like, what am I doing here? Yeah, I'm 20 years old. I get off the plane. I'm like, am I really going to leave my family, leave my friends, leave America, go join this order in Rome, speak this language I don't even know how to speak. All of a sudden I started going through these tremendous anxiety attacks and doubts. You know, which is, again, you can say is maybe typical when it comes to any vocation and discernment, right? But because of my condition, what ended up happening over those few weeks is the thought that got latched into my thought process, which is a complete false reality, is that I was thinking, I was convinced that God was calling me to this vocation, religious life, joining this, leaving America, going to Rome. And so, of course, the thought is like, okay, if I don't do this, and at the time, now I'm also experiencing like, God, now that I look back, I'm like, God was never calling me to it. He wanted me to experience it. But he, because the way that my body was reacting, I was like, I don't want to be here right now. This, I am miserable. I do not want to join this order right now. But the thought that got latched in was if I don't join this order, if I don't fulfill this obligation of what God's asking me to, then my whole life will be pointless. I'm in danger of hell. My like if God's calling me to be in America uh, in, in Rome, but I'm but I choose to be in America, then my then I'm not going to get any of the fruitfulness that God wants me to get done. All of these lies started to sink in that you think are real. Like not only is my uh, am I in uh, in danger of possible like internal damnation because I'm completely outside of God's will, but my whole life would be pointless because I'd be meant to be somewhere else. That thought, that lie, got so latched into my emotional state. I can't tell you the depression and the anxiety, the fear that caused. I literally lost like 12 pounds within three weeks, which is obviously a not normal thing. And it was, and it was all my OCD. I was so convinced that I was turning my back on God um, because I didn't want to join this order. And so that's just, that's like an extreme example. Be that, and it's, and it took a long time. It took me years to realize that I didn't turn my back on God, that I wasn't outside of God. That's real. Like, because that's not how God works anyway. Like, even if he was calling me to the religious life and I decided no, he would still bless that. He would still love me. My, my life could be still very fruitful. I mean, that's a whole other category of discussion because God wants to work with our free will. He's not this law giving time trying to just to make us slaves here. He wants to be our friends. Amen. That's that's an extreme example. Yeah, amen. And uh, we have several videos on this channel <clears throat> helping people through these scrupulosities, these thoughts, these these uh, these irrational fears that cause God to be an enemy. And God, you know, is really 
puts a wedge in between you and God, destroys your relationship because you think anything you do wrong, you know, he's going to get you. And um, I, I have come to terms because I've struggled a lot with lies, obsessive thoughts as well um, at times, especially in my past. And just the lies, it's amazing. It's amazing how many lies our minds tell us and that we believe them. They seem true. You know, it seems like God says this or does that. And it seems like, you know, we should be doing this or should be doing that. And sometimes people can't tell us otherwise. And sometimes they can. Um, you know, like several people recently, Catholic people said they can't walk into a church. And I said, why not? And they said, well, because everybody's judging me. And the first thing I thought, the first thing that came to my mind is that's a lie. And I told them that. I said, that's a lie. I said, do you really think all 640 people in that church turned their heads and looked at you at the same time and judged you? And they said, well, no. <laughs> I said, no, your mind is lying to you. So, you know, just I have a thousand examples of that. But, you know, these things really damage us and they keep us from doing what's right. So, could you take a, a minute or two to talk about the different kinds of ways that our minds do lie to us and some of the, the damage that it could do uh, in our lives? Sure. And especially when it comes to like, especially for practicing Catholics who are trying to really live a faithful life. The big one is that like the whole that like is just like constantly getting beat. You're beating yourself up. You're like, you're, you're, you're judging yourself to the umph degree that you've done this wrong, you've done that wrong, and it kind of gets you enslaved. It gets you fearful to do to act, and then it's like whenever you do act or even slightly mess up, it causes you to immediately go to confession or immediately do that. And so with the so that's so that's like one side of it. And then the extreme is some people get so sick of that anxiety as they should, then you start kind of running away with it and being like, you know what? It's this is the church's fault. This is their, like, you know, these laws don't make sense or these rules don't make sense. And so they almost like leave the Catholic church or live, leave the, like a life of morality because they just can't deal with the anxiety and fear anymore. So it's like, it's like this double-edged sword that happens where sometimes we just get enslaved to the law and caught, or we just run away from them because we can't deal with it. And that's not how God wants us to, he wants to set us free. He wants us to really look at this in a way that like is out of his love with orthodox objective truth reality. And um, and that can play in so many different ways. Can you talk more about what happened after you kind of discovered that you had OCD, you know, mental health struggles? You know, how it how did it how did that affect your life? How did that impact you? And kind of where did you go from there? So I mean it was it was really beautiful where like God in a way, like we have to remember we're body, soul, and spirit, right? And so God wants us to work on all aspects of that. Like each part has a very unique and important part. And there's a way to handle the spirit, a way to handle the body, the way to handle the soul. Um, so for me, it was, you know, because in our in our world and church today, sometimes we like to just have the division of like, we can maybe pray this stuff away, or we just need medication. And we just, sometimes we don't know how to bring the two together. Yeah, of course, God can can absolutely heal somebody on the spot from mental illness or what we see time and time again in the scriptures. And of, and absolutely like how many doctors and, and medications have helped people. But what I've discovered that's helped me a lot, especially in the faith, is that having the combination of both is quite beautiful and it's quite healing. So when I first discovered that I had the OCD, um, what I was spending most of my time doing before it was just trying to pray it away. Like I'd always associate my anxiety, my fear and depression with either spiritual attack, which some of it was, or like it was just like part of the spiritual journey and I could pray it away. And I wasn't really getting the help that I need when it came to science and chemical and my physical body. Um, and so once I started bringing the two together, the freedom was unbelievable. And I realized that I needed both. So you know, I was, I discovered I had, so basically when I was going during COVID, I was, all the depression and anxiety was hitting at a different level than never before. And I, it started me to question. And I also, I also noticed that I was really getting fearful about irrational things. Like things were just so absurd. And I was like, how am I upset about this right now? Like it's something started to finally click that something was off. And I, I, I started looking back in my life. I'm like, when was I ever really good? When, do I, when did I feel free? And I started looking back and I realized when I was at the first year in seminary, I, have, I was taking Lexapro. 
because I was struggling at the time with depression. And of course, back then I associate it with moral, like spiritual attack. And, you know, this is just part of the journey, whatever, but I was on Lexapro and I was really good for those two years. I remember thinking like I was free. Like I was, the depression wasn't as intense. The anxiety wasn't as intense, but because I was free now, you know, God healed it. I got off the meds and then the, and the journey continued. And so that made me, and then as time went on, I realized, oh wait, no, I'm just getting back into where I was during that time. And when was that good? It was when I was on the meds. So when I had the combination of getting the help that I need spiritually with my, like a spiritual direction, unbound, because you know, we'll talk more about this after, like, because there is absolutely attack from the enemy too, because he knows how to use our weaknesses in this. But like what, what really helped me was the counseling being revealed to me. Oh, this is just classic OCD. You're fine. Millions of Americans struggle with this. Maybe try this medication. Maybe try this counseling. And everyone's different. Some people need medication. Some just need counseling. Some just need to deal with some baggage. And so when I put the whole three together, body, soul, spirit, got the help, the freedom, it's not perfect, but it's light and day compared, I mean, night and day compared to yeah, what it was. Amazing. Uh, and that's great. You know, and I'm glad you feel, you know, more free from that. There are a lot of people out there who need counseling and they won't go because they think it's weak you know or mm. they what you know the demon of pride is telling them oh you're too good for that you don't need that you know you don't need people telling you what to do and they're still hurting people around them they're damaging themselves and people around them because they won't get the help they need but there's other people who need medications see my concern is that people take the extremes you know and they don't meet in the middle like you did you know on the one hand they say you could just pray it away really why don't you go pray your broken leg away then too? You know, why don't you yeah. go pray your heart attack away? You know, we don't apply that to the rest of our life. Only our mental health issues we try to justify and just, oh, we're just going to, and I can't complain because I did it too. My chest used to have huge issues and I couldn't breathe for many years, um, you know, on and off. And I prayed and prayed and prayed that it would go away. Guess what? It never did. And then one day, you know, I did something, you know, miraculous. I went to the hospital um, and I found out that my lungs were collapsing. And they actually had full collapse, you know, and doctors said I should have died because it could move your heart over and many other things. But the bottom line is my lungs were collapsing for years. I never got them checked out, just tried to pray it away. It didn't work. But when I went to the hospital, it did work. You know, maybe the praying got me to go there, actually. But the bottom line is we sometimes need medical help, whether that's psychological, physical, emotional, mental, spiritual. There's many different types of help we need. And I want to challenge the people out there to get it. Sometimes that takes medication. People say, oh, you shouldn't take medications. You know, we take medications for almost everything. And it, not I, I am of the personal opinion that medications and big farm are way over prescribed and way overused. And there's people on medications who don't need to be, and they are building bridges over a lake that isn't, it, that's empty. They're not actually dealing with the issues. They're not helping people. They're just sticking them on meds. So, you know, I do want to avoid the extremes of all of it, but I do think that medications are necessary for some people, even if it's not the majority. And I do think, you know, counseling, which I went to before my marriage, so I didn't destroy it. And after my marriage, and I may even need it again, who knows, you know, but the bottom line is I want to be a whole person. And so I've also employed these things. I want to challenge people out there to employ these things. And absolutely, you're absolutely right. Because like, it's, it's, it's like, we, we, we do this with everything else. Like if I sprain my ankle, I go to the doctor and then there's certain things. It's my unique ankle and they they have to take an x-ray and it's like, and so it's the same when it comes to the mind, like you go get the help that you need. And so that's why it's in the extreme, sh it shouldn't be there because it's every, every mental illness case is, is very unique, unrepeatable than anybody else's, but there is general things you can do to help that particular situation. And it's all good. And it's like you like with so helped me a lot was like I had the counseling and the medication with the spiritual direction. And I was able to really starting to really was able to really clearly see with the help of the professionals around me. OK, this is my OCD. Oh, this is actually the Holy Spirit speaking to me. Oh, this is just my this is my broken thing, because when I was a kid, I, I this happened to me and I I can see you can see it because it's like this. This stuff is out there. When I started reading, it was so freeing to me to read articles on OCD because I was like, I can't believe I've no one's ever explained this to me. It was like it was like word for word. I was like, I am a classic case of OCD. 
And it was freeing because I'm like, okay, I'm not the only one. What happens a lot with people with mental illness is you think you're alone. You think you're the only mm -hmm. one in the room struggling with it. I can't tell you how many times, like I give talks, as you mentioned, across the country now with this, with talking about the spiritual reality and the, and the me mental health stuff. I get a line of people being like, Colin, thank you for sharing your testimony. I thought I was alone on this. I struggle with this. I have bipolar. I have depression. I have anxiety. I thought I was alone. And it's almost like people are feeling like they're getting permission to get the help that they need. There is a, and it, a lot of it stems from a stigma from our, our parents' generation. And let's just be honest with it. Like, I see this played out where even family members of mine, when I first was dealing with my mental health issues, it was kind of like, they, it was encouraged for me from the older people around me, don't talk about it. Don't tell anybody you're on medication. Don't, almost like there's like this embarrassing. Mm -hmm. And I was like, guys, no, like this is, okay. it's okay that I'm on medication. It's okay that I'm getting counseling. It, and like, and I, I was almost like, and I promise you now that I'm getting free, like you need it too. Like, you know, it depends, like, you know. <laughs> Um, so that whole stigma is going away. So I think we've got to start really combining the both and just be like, guys, it's okay to get help. You're not alone. You're, you're we're all broken. We're all weak. We all need help. Jesus is clear. It's not the healthy who need a physician, right? It's the sick. And it's and it's not outside of scripture. Jesus sometimes healed and then he also spit on the ground and use mud and put it on the eyes. That was his way of saying like, that was physical medicine he was doing. Like he was like, a, you know, he always used both. Yeah, you used my exact phrase that I was just about to use. We are all broken. We are all broken. We all grew up with different things. And in fact, I'm writing a book on mental health right now. And um, I don't know what the name of it's going to be, but originally just to be funny, I was. I, uh, it's called How to Successfully Brainwash Yourself. Yeah. And uh, the reason behind that is because we've all bought lies since we're little children, you know, that we're too fat, that we're too skinny, that we're too tall, that we're, we're not smart enough, that God doesn't love us. We sin too often. Oh, you said you wouldn't sin with God? You've sinned many times and you keep sinning. Therefore, he is not happy with you at all. And it prevents us from approaching him. And it gives us this, uh, and this is what I struggled with for a long time, just I had to be perfect in order for God to love me. And, and I had to do everything. I had to dot every I and I had to cross every T in order for God to love me. And if I showed up at mass and I didn't do all that, I felt like God was burning a hole through my soul with his eyes. You know, he was just not happy. And if I did do it all and I was perfect, well, he wasn't happy with me. It's what I was supposed to do anyways. And it was just this, uh, it was this OCD perfectionism that I couldn't win either way. And it's just, it's super heavy. It's like carrying a thousand pound weight on your heart yeah, every day. Shame. You're enslaved. Yeah, I was. And it wasn't until I read good spiritual books, like I Believe in Love and several others, and I got good spiritual help. And I had a big miraculous conversion healing, which healed a lot of it, not all of it, but a lot of it. Um, you know, that I could even see that. And God showed me who he was, showed me his love. And it's like before that, I thought that was all textbook dogmatic fact. And all of it was a lie from the devil. Devil is playing on my fears. And I've I've counseled Catholics. I've counseled Protestants, Protestant praise and worship leaders who go out there and play for everyone and try to get everyone to love God. And they don't even know God's love. They say, I think God hates me. They tell me that. And I was like, wow, brother, we got to talk about your mental health, your understanding of God. And there's just so much of it. And um, I'm glad you're out here trying to get people. It, there's nothing wrong with getting the help. That's the point. We're all broken. I'm broken. I have no problem admitting that. It's pride that'll tell you you're not broken. You're fine. That's pride. No. From beginning of our childhood, we buy lies. We buy abuse. We buy many things that we make part of our identity. We need to rebrainwash ourselves with the truth, God's truth, the truth that sets us free. Well, and you brought up a point. I'm glad you said I believe in love with that book because, like, many of the saints struggled with mental health. Like, if you understand, if you really study Saint Therese a little flower, especially the time after she, she remember she lost her mom, and then Pauline, the, the older sister, entered the convent, and then she had a mental, she literally had a mental break, and she had now she was cured at the time with like the, the smile virgin. But like, what all she was doing that was classic. She was having a mental. Saint Therese, especially with all her scrupulosity, struggled with OCT to the um, OCD with the umph degree. It was a whole mental thing that she was going through. Mm -hmm. Saint Maximilian Kolbe, his OCD people maybe people don't know this, but his OCD was so bad at times that he literally 
had to walk around with a priest and the, and to be able to act because he was so enslaved, feeling that he was always sinning, like, like he would the, out of obedience because he was a religious, the priest would have to order him to do something for him to be able to do it. And that freedom, because he was doing it out of the order and that he wasn't doing it on his own. That's how bad his OCD was. He was so enslaved uh-huh. to it. And it took time for him to. So many awesome, amazing saints struggled with mental illness to show again, it's okay. It's part of the journey. Get the help you need. God wants us to be free. You know, he doesn't want us to be enslaved at this. He's allowing it. It's the cross. It's leading us closer to him. It's the mystery of suffering, but it's not this like terrible, bad thing. That's like, you know, it's just like any, it's like any other cross, but we need to get the help. Amen. And I have enough issues to fill many subscriptions, you know, which is why I've needed many help from many different people. But how can people get help, Colin? You know, if people are struggling and if people uh, maybe are even fearful, like they know they could or should get some help, or maybe they don't know it, but they have inclinations that there's something wrong. You know, what can they do? How can they even get started on this? It's a good question. And it's like, so basically what I, what, ha- what I did, which was helpful, is that first I like started to read, almost just educate yourself. Like if you know you've got anxiety, depression, fear, and like you're constantly struggling with something, you're constantly caught something, first just being able to recognize, okay, this is not, not normal. No, what I, it's, it's, I don't like saying the word you're not, that's not normal in the sense of like, because that's another way of pointing at being like, see, I'm not normal. Something's wrong with me. I can't tell anybody. No, just, but you just recognize, okay, I'm not free. Okay. I'm not free. I want to get free. And so to educate yourself, like what helped me so much was that I rec- like I started reading about OCD and bipolar and all these different things. And it's, it, it's all there. And it was just like, and for me, when I was looking at all the different type of mental illnesses, I was like, I'm a classic OCD case. So I was educating myself. And I was like, oh yeah, this is me. This is exactly what I do. And this is exactly what I feel. And I'm not, and it's like, this is happening to millions of Americans across the country. No one ever even told me. And then that forced me to be like, oh, okay, I'm going to start talking to a psychologist or a psych and a psychiatrist. So I started looking up like, and people you trust, like you, of course there's, you got, you know, you got to, you know, vet like, like any other, anything out there, like you want to get the right person because there's extremes on all ends, just like in anything else in the, in any profession. But I would encourage you to look, look for a psychologist and meet, meet with them, talk to a psychiatrist. It's okay. Just because you're talking to a psychiatrist, we have against that whole stigma, like, oh, that person's crazy. That's why they're going to talk to a psychiatrist. I don't want anyone to think I'm crazy. No, guys, we're all, we're all broken. We're all, they can need help. So Go get the help you need. And then through the professional help, you can start discerning. Be like, all right, but maybe, you know, if you're if your anxiety is this bad, like my, my anxiety was so bad, I'm losing 12 pounds in three weeks. That's a problem. That's got to get fixed. So for me, it was like it was very chemical. <laughs> like I needed medication. And it's like, and that's helped me. But not everybody's gonna need medication. Sometimes, sometimes I was able to just go through the counseling and the and just being able to vent it and realize that I'm not crazy and that I'm just got I I struggle to pray. Like just knowing the 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 what's going on is helpful and professionals can help you with that. And it also keeps you sane because like it keeps you need people helping around you because like you're so close to the situation. Um, you think you're alone and you don't know how to help yourself because you just, you, you're so used to it. You just think it, you think it's normal because you've been experiencing it maybe in your entire life. Um, so I would encourage you to educate yourself. There's millions of articles online. Go, go to me, set up a meeting with a psychologist, set up a meeting with a psychologist, set a psychiatrist, set up a meeting with a spiritual director, especially one that, you know, a priest who might have some background in mental health. Like I was very thankful that my yes. spiritual director minored in psychology. So that's been a huge benefit for me because he was, he's like, oh, this is classic OCD scrupulosity. Like he knew right away, you know, with the spiritual (laughs) side. Good for him. I'm glad you got that. Oh, you know, and you just say it's classic, but I want to point out that, you know, the lie again, you know, there's so many lies that the devil just loves to lie to us, to keep us and society, to keep us back. And one of the lies is that if you go to counseling, you're crazy. You pointed that out. You know, you, most people go to counseling and they're not crazy. Very few people who go to counseling are actually crazy. The majority do not. The majority are normal people like you and me who just have some issues and there's nothing wrong with it. People say, oh, well, if I go to counseling, I'm not normal. Well, let's say you're not normal. By not going to counseling, you're still not normal. By going to counseling, you can be normal. I was not normal, okay? 
for a long time, I struggled with mental health issues. And I remember a priest in confession once told me, as your penance, he's like, I want you to ask God, you know, over the next <clears throat> few days or whatever, just ask God for the grace to be normal. And I said, okay, I will. And after three weeks of praying that, I'm like, hey, did he just, he said I wasn't normal. How, I'm so offended. I didn't even get it. And then three weeks later, I just got so offended that I wasn't normal. He said I wasn't normal. But you know what? I wasn't. I wasn't. You know, nobody is. Nobody's, no, nobody's perfect. And what we're saying, you're not, it's not that you're not normal. It's not that you're not perfect. And that's okay. You know what? But the fact is I started praying about it. And I started going to counseling. And I got from here to here. Whereas if we say, oh, well, I'm not normal. Well, then you stay here. And you don't fix the problems. You still don't feel free. You still struggle. You still just eke your way through life every single day. And you don't feel better. But if you go, you do. Some people might say, I'm sorry, I don't shouldn't be talking this much, but I just have I, I've lived this too, and I just have so much feelings about it. But um because I, I struggle too. I'm like, I don't trust counselors. You know, they're not good. You know, they have struggles too. And to be honest, I don't trust most counselors today. I don't think most counselors have dealt with their own issues before wanting to help other people. They haven't got from point A to point B. I think it's noble. They want to help other people, but you need to deal with your own issues first. But that doesn't mean all of them are bad. There are many, many good Catholic counselors out there, even online now. It's easier than ever to find help. Maybe you could talk about that briefly. Sure. And so, you know, things that have, have helped me along the way is that you've got Dr. Bob Schutz, who's got Be Healed. And it's it's a good combination of it's a it's very it's very spiritual based when it comes to like prayer and stuff. But but he goes through the background of how like it's how to help the whole person. Uh, Dr. Greg Batoro has got this Catholic Psych Institute, and he's done amazing work with a, a great combination of a lot of this stuff comes also from Father Benedict Rochelle and the, the Captain Friars, the Franciscan the Renewal here in New York. Like he was very big on mental health stuff back in the He was ahead of the time, if you will, um, especially in the church, because as we know, the church is always years and years behind like a lot of different things. But um, and it's it, 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 and he was ahead of the time with it. And it's like he he had this great combination of like understanding the human person. And it's really stemming from a lot from also from John Paul II, like his understanding of the human person or body, soul and spirit. So I would look, I would recommend looking up Be Healed uh, with Dr. Bob Schutz. I would recommend looking up uh, Catholic Psych Institute and Dr. Greg Batoro and the amazing programs they got out there. Um, Sister Miriam James is a phenomenal speaker and she talks about her mental health uh, struggles and like she'll, she can probably point you to, to different things to like get the help that you need. Um, and that's also, I'm just coming from like the Catholic perspective, but I just encourage you all out there just to go like look up psychologists and psychiatrists in your area. Like they don't have to be faith-based. Like, like when I go to my doctors, my doctor is not, my cardiologist, I, I've had some serious heart problems. Um, and I, you know, and I, I've got an awesome cardiologist. He's, it's not like he, he's like this big Catholic. It, no, like I'm going, I treat, he's just an awesome cardiologist and he's a great man. And it's like, so you don't, it doesn't necessarily have to be someone based off faith. Uh, and it, like, you got to treat your mind like anything else, like you just said, like we've both been talking about. You got a broken leg, you go to the hospital. You've, we all have broken minds from our own wounds, from the, the original sin, the fall, from just the world in the, that we're living in and just everything that we just went through with COVID, like the isolation for the last two years is going to have huge ramifications on our mental health. And this is across mm -hmm. the board. That's, mm -hmm. that's normal in a sense that you're going to have problems being isolated for two years in many different levels is not okay. And it's not normal. So you shouldn't be normal after that. So we're going to need help to get past a lot of that. And many of us, I want to, this is the, this is the kicker, people. Many people hurt and even destroy their marriages because they won't get the help they need. They, many people can't hold down a job because they don't get the help they need. Many people shoot themselves in a foot in a whole variety of ways. They, they, they get kicked out of, you know, Catholic groups or they get kicked out of this or they can't socialize with people or they're ex considered extreme and fundamentalist. There's a lot of different ways mental health manifests itself. But the bottom line is, you know, it's okay to get that help, you know, because when you do, 
as St. Catherine said, you will become, you know, well, Matthew Kelly says you'll become the best version of yourself, you know, but we're meant, we become the people that God meant us to be. And that's when we're going to change the world instead of hurt the world around us. And the more we hurt the world around us, the more help we need. And I hurt endless people before I got the help I needed. I was venting out my anger, my, my old abuses, my mental health issues. I was just angry at the world. I was angry at everyone. I was struggling with OCD, probably other things as well. And it was a whole mess going on within me. And it was coming out and just vomiting my own issues on the world, just hating everybody, just being angry all the time. You know what? You don't have to be. And when you realize that you don't have to calorie a thousand pound heart through life, every day of your life, it's the most amazing feeling in the world. And I want to challenge you guys to at least start that journey. And if you need help with that, if you're scared, Colin's here for you. I'm sure you can reach out to him. I'm here for you. It's what we do here at Catholic Truth. We want to accompany you on your journeys of faith and hope and love of Christ and just in your life in general. So, you know, feel free to reach out to us. Um, you know, Colin, do you have any, you know, closing thoughts? I would love to do a whole nother show on this, like going a lot deeper on these issues. But, you know, do you have any thoughts just to close with for people that they might need to hear? Yeah, for sure. Do, you know, don't be afraid of your own weakness and sin and stench and filth of evil. You know, one of my favorite parts of, of the Gospels, right, right before they, Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead, right? So but here we got Lazarus in the tomb for four days, and Jesus says, remove the stone. And do you remember what everyone screamed? But Jesus, there's going to be a great stench. stench. There's going to be a great stench. And Jesus is like, I don't care remove the stone we're afraid of our own stench we're afraid of our own weakness and and you know and we we touched upon this where you know because of our upbringing it because of our just because of the broken world we live in when we when we behave well we're rewarded when we behave badly we're punished and we portray that unto god the father and and uh, and the, and mary our mother so we portray that reality onto them so when we're bad and we know we're bad or we're doing something wrong we think god's mad at us and, we, and then we're afraid to go to it. But it's the complete opposite. Jesus, in a sense, he's attracted to our weakness. He's attracted to our stand. I can't heal myself. This is why he was going to the prostitutes and tax collectors. This is why he said it's the, it's the sick. So he he's not afraid of our stench. We shouldn't be afraid of our stench. He wants us to go to him with our stench so he can heal it. So whatever you're going through, it's quite the, the evil one wants you to be like, get that fixed or you can't go near God. It's the complete opposite. You've got to go to God and the professional helps with everything that you're struggling with. That's what he wants. He's attracted to it. He's attracted. It's going to sound weird, but in a sense, he's attracted to our stench. He's, a, he's attracted to it so he can heal it. It's not sin is a, sin isn't good. It's not like he likes it. No, he's like, he wants to fix us. So don't be afraid of your own stench. Go Amen. and admit yourself that you're broken and know that God loves you particularly in that brokenness. That's what he means by St. Faustina. He says, the greater the sinner, the greater the right to my mercy. The greater the sinner, the greater the right to my love. He's attracted to sinners. He's, so don't be afraid of it. Amen. One priest once told me that Jesus chooses to sit in the manure of our lives, and then he turns it into a beautiful flower garden. And, uh, it's just so true in my life and many other people's lives I know. Uh, Colin, where, uh, I don't know if you want, but if you know people want to follow you or see your work or see what you do, where can they find you? Sure. I, um, I'm on Facebook. I'm on Instagram. Uh, you can just type in my name or, and Mercy and Our Lady. Um, there's some YouTube videos of just different talks that I've given on Divine Mercy and mental health um, as of late. Um, so yeah, and I'm so, you know, feel free to reach out to me uh, over email. Um, and, you know, we could do my Gmail. I'll, I'll send it to you, Brian, and maybe you could put in the link. Uh, and if just, yeah, if anyone yeah. wants to invite Colin to speak on any topic, if you want to bring him to your parish, if you want him to talk to your church or your group about this topic, feel free to reach out to him on that. Sorry, Colin. No, no, yeah, it'd be great. And, um, and, and just feel free to, any questions. I, I can't, I, I, as I said, without fail, every time I give a talk, there's a lot of people being like, just you're, get give yourself the permission that you need to get help and you're not alone and it's okay. Amen. Well, thank you, Colin, for joining us today. Thank you for sharing this wisdom. And I hope you'll come back and go deeper with us to help people who are just being destroyed by these things, especially since COVID. Absolutely. No, it was a joy to have me and I'm a joy to be with you. And thank you for, uh, uh, yes, thanks for having me because like it's, it's such an important topic.
Amen. And thank you all for tuning in today. If you know someone who's struggling with mental health, please share this. Uh, maybe not, hey, you need this, you know, watch this, <laughs> but maybe share it on your social media platforms and just get it out there because pretty much there's a lot of people struggling. I would say even maybe half today or maybe even more than half today are struggling since COVID. And you know what? As Colin said, that's normal after everything we've been through. But you don't have to stay there. You can be normal. Well, no one's going to be normal and perfect forever, but you know, it's going to be in a much better place. So, you know, please share this with everyone you know. And if you have any questions, put them in the comments uh, description section or reach out to us. But keep, please, keep, please keep praying for us, for our ministry, all the people we reach, because we're always praying for you. Thank you all for watching and God bless you.